Hi guys, how are you? It's lovely to be with you again today. Um, over the last few weeks, um, I haven't done one of these videos because lots of the other team have been doing it. So it's really nice to be here with you again today um, to take this jam slot. So um, today we're going to be talking about a statement that Jesus made called, you are the salt of the earth. Bit strange, but let's see where it goes. So over the last nine weeks, we've been looking at the Beatitudes, which are they form just part of teaching that Jesus gave called the Sermon on the Mount. So that was when he was standing up a mountain, talking to the people, teaching them things. Um, and we finished that part of his talk now. But actually, that was part of a much longer talk that Jesus gave. And straight after he'd finished the Beatitudes, Jesus made this statement. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Well, in our house, Tom, you know, my husband Tom, he has developed this strange habit recently where he uses everyday objects as almost a kind of jokey insult. So let me give you an example. Um, Peter or Matthew or Rachel will say, um, Dad, can you pass me the cucumber? Tom says, you're a cucumber. They groan. Or Peter says, Dad, have you seen my bike helmet? You're a bike helmet. I don't know what it's all about. Those of you who know Tom well might not think that's that strange, because he is a bit strange, isn't he? But it is a bit of an odd thing. When Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, he wasn't being like Tom. He wasn't just being funny and a bit weird or trying to make the disciples laugh. He was actually making a very serious point. And in order to understand this, we first of all need to think a little bit about salt. What is salt? Well, I've got here my salt grinder. So this might be what you you think of when you think about salt. Mine's actually got like little lumps of rock salt in it and you kind of grind it and then it goes to a fine powder. And that might be what most of you are thinking of is that fine white stuff that we, you sprinkle it on food, don't you? And um, makes your chips taste good. And nowadays, lots of people say you shouldn't have too much of it on your food because it's not very healthy. So if that's salt, Jesus wants us to be an ingredient in cooking? Not really sure about that. Um, so what did he mean? And what about only being a little of us? Should there be not too much of us? Should we not talk too much or not be around people too much? Well, let's see if we can work it out. I mean, most recipes only ask for a pinch of salt, just a little bit. But that little bit can make a huge difference. If any of you have ever tried making bread, the recipe asks for a pinch of salt and that actually helps make the yeast work. And if you don't put it in because you think I'll be healthy and I won't use salt, the yeast doesn't work properly and the bread doesn't rise. And if any of you have tried that, you'll know what I mean. And also it just tastes a bit kind of flat. So salt makes things taste better helps things to work properly as they should, but we only need a little bit of it. Hmm. Well, just like having salt on our food makes it taste so much better, having even a little bit of Jesus in our lives, reading the Bible, praying, going to church, maybe watching something online at the moment, or attending an online service, watching the jam videos, that little bit of Jesus can make a big difference in our lives. And when Jesus asked us to be like salt, he meant that we can show other people what having Jesus in our lives is like, what a difference that makes in our lives. By the things we say and the things that we do, we can show them, introduce them to a little bit of what Jesus is like so that they can get the benefits in their life. Let me give you an example. It doesn't matter if there is only a few Christians or maybe you are even the only Christian you know in your school or in your family, in your home, in the places that you visit, you on your own 
or just those few Christians can make a big difference. For example, little things like being patient, holding the door open for other people, letting others go first. Simple things like smiling, following the rules without complaining, saying a kind word to people, encouraging people, remembering to say please and thank you. Or perhaps even by staying calm when other people around us are very worried or anxious. At the moment, lots of people are very worried about their health, maybe, to do with COVID, worried about their jobs, about money, about where the next lot of food is going to come from, or a great many other things that they might be worried about. And we might be worried about those things too, but we know that we can pray and ask Jesus to help in those situations, and we know that Jesus is in charge and that he's in control. So we can kind of give our worries over to Jesus. And if we show other people that we can stay calm, even though those same things are going on in our lives, and if we can explain to them the reason we're calm is because of Jesus, that might be exactly what they need to hear right now, and maybe like being salt in their life. Also, there's another characteristic of salt that we don't think about so much today but it would have been incredibly relevant in Jesus' time. Salt is a preservative. That's a fancy word, but it just means that it helps to, it's used to keep things fresh, to preserve them, okay? So before we had fridges long ago, they hadn't invented fridges and didn't have electricity to keep the fridges working, people used salt. They used to store things like meat in salt and it was the only way to keep things fresh. So salt was actually really valuable and it was really highly thought of and it was prized thing to have. Um, so as, as we can see as Christians, we are also very valuable and really important because we can help others not to keep them fresh in terms of stopping them going bad, going mouldy, but stopping them turning bad in terms of turning to sin. So we can show by our own example the right way to live our lives. And Jesus said, he gave a little bit of a warning. He said, if salt loses its saltiness, it's no good for anything anymore because we're not showing the right example. And nowadays, there might be things that we know go against God's rules, but that other people think is OK. And we're, the challenge for us is to carry on following God's rules because we know it's the right thing to do, even if those around us don't choose to follow those rules. Let me think of an example for you. The world might say, look after number one, put yourself first. That's absolutely right. Now, I'm not saying we should never do things for ourselves because God does say we should look after ourselves, but the Bible also says in Philippians chapter 2, I believe it is, yeah, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So the Bible kind of goes a bit differently to what the world says. And there can be many examples of that. And sometimes it can be kind of hard to stick up for the, what we know to be right according to the Bible. But when we do, we're helping preserve those around us like salt. I'm going to say a prayer for us today because I know that this is tricky. Heavenly Father, please help us over the next week to look for opportunities to be salt in our schools, in our homes, at the supermarket even, and as we go about our week, be with us in all that we say and do. Amen. It's been great to be with you and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Have a great week. Bye.